growing up um, as a young girl, I lived in a society where you could see a lot of women um, facing many challenges, and one of the one of them, uh, gender-based violence. Uh, as a child, I would see maybe our neighbors beating up their wives, and in society, it was like something that was very normal because the husband always had a justification on why they were doing it. Maybe she was bent suddenly, maybe she didn't wash his clothes properly, maybe she didn't feed the children, yet he didn't provide anything. So you'd see those cases and police would come, but the next day you see this woman is back again with that man. And growing up, I just, you know, you saw a lot of these cases. So when it came time for me to choose a profession, I just said I wanted to be a journalist so that I could write more about these cases, bring them to light, and also maybe make the women see how the law can help them in terms of you know, using the courts, the court system, reporting cases to the police, and many other things that affect them. Being a female leader in my society is quite difficult. You come across a, a section of people that believe that all female journalists are prostitutes because you get to meet a lot of men when you do your stories, your sources are sometimes men, you wake around a lot of men. So by just so doing, they give you this tag because you're always around people, you're too exposed to people. If you're married, you spend more, uh, more time at work and less time at home. Sometimes you have to travel, sometimes you have to be you know, working late into the night. So it really affects um, me and I think even other females in the media industry. I work very well with men. I believe the secret, my secret to working with men is just being competent whenever I do anything, whether it's clearing a story, whether it's uh, presenting my diary, whether it's presenting a pitch to the editor, whether it's mentoring even the male journalists in the newsroom, just make sure that you're doing it so well so that people don't have anything or any excuse to say, ah, this one is incompetent or whatever. I just do things, you know, to perfection. That's what I do. Based on my experience, um, I've got, I think, three things that maybe people can do. The first thing is if you want something, things don't come to you. You have to show up. So if you want that promotion, if you want that responsibility, just show up, make yourself seen. You need to speak out, you know, when something you feel is being done, maybe in a way that's not professional at work, or you just feel that maybe some things that may compromise your work are not being addressed. You need to speak out because if you don't, at the end of the day, you're the one who's going to be, you know, you, to be saying like, ah, she can't do this, she can't do that. So when you learn to speak out, people know your concerns and they know that you are aware of them and it's that you become a good manager and you become a good leader. That drive to succeed uh, keeps me going that uh, drive to see change in society, that uh, drive to be the voice of the voiceless. You know, in the media, when you write stories about women who are being abused, you're being their voice. So that drives me a lot because sometimes they don't have that opportunity to, to, to speak out. They don't have that opportunity to make their stories heard. So if I continue doing what I'm doing, I become their voice. Even if change doesn't come immediately one day, you may see the stories that um, we are writing as journalists, making a change in their lives, even in terms of legislation in the country. A world that the, you don't see high statistics on gender-based violence, a world where women get equal opportunities in the workplace, in political spheres, you know, anywhere, in council, everywhere, in all positions, you see women also taking their sports.